Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Minecraft. I'm playing on the same world where we sort of defeated, sort of decided to live and let live with the cave dweller. However, there is a new horror upon us. Today, I am trying out the Deep Blood mod. Now, I don't know what this mod does exactly, however... I'm told that it aims to turn the Knights of Minecraft into a true horror experience. Now this mod was actually created for this channel by user Hersical over on the Librarian Discord, and they put this thing together insanely quickly. However, I specifically did not really follow what was actually going on in development because, well, they strongly advised that I not spoil it for myself. The only thing I have to go on is the description over on Curse Forge. As I anxiously watch and wait for the sun to dip below the horizon. I am so nervous to find out what those more horror-filled nights will actually entail. But since we are going off of the uh, Cave Dweller world, I think it's best to be a little bit on the safe side and gear up for the worst. I honestly think that uh, between the shipwreck and all the diving we've been doing down below, and possibly the activities of any compatriots who may have also survived said shipwreck, I think I might have been cursed, honestly. Sure feels that way. But it does say in the description that there is potentially a way to break that curse. Now, I was advised not to spoil this for myself, and that if I'm stuck, not sure how to progress, that I should check the advancements. So I'll do that, but my first experience is going to be a blind one. Let's have a comfort baked potato. And step out into the night to see what this means. And we encounter a spider jockey right away. Ah, oh, these spider jockeys always vying for attention. You are not the subject of this video. And I don't really have the arrows to spend on you. Oh man, I'm gonna have to build a chicken farm. Uh. Okay, so I guess we just confirmed that the mod is indeed working, at least. Uh, but so far, I'm only seeing the regular mobs, but... God, that sound made my heart sink. Uh, see, the thing about Minecraft is that it, it has this way of playing on your fears on a primal level. I mean, imagine if you were outside in real life and heard something like that. The cave noises are much the same way, and I honestly would need more time to think about what properties it is that actually makes them feel that way. All I know is that it's certainly the first warning that something is out here looking for me. <laughs> it's just an Enderman. Honestly, j just knowing that the mod is indeed in play has me so unbelievably jumpy, just not knowing what to expect. And honestly, the longer I go without seeing something, the more on edge I get. I mean, it's a real paranoia, Knowing unspecifically that something is out to get you, but not what. Yeah, I'm kind of getting overwhelmed by the regular mobs. Maybe, maybe it would do me some good just to wait inside for a little while. Uh, this is so nerve-wracking. I think what I should really do is go down and get some obsidian to make an enchantment table. Even though I'm wearing a full suit of diamond armor, it still feels like it's not enough. Oh, also, I've had to downgrade the world uh, in order to use this mod, so some issues like this may arise. You know, I've been sticking pretty close to my base for safety, but... Now I'm starting to think, what if I try wandering a little farther? There's some jungle right over here, and <laughs> going into the trees is not a good idea, but... I mean, maybe it'll bear some kind of fruit? Get out of here, Junior. Uh, all the regular mobs are going to complicate this somewhat. 
Oh, it's a whole swamp. Uh, and it is very dark. I'm, I'm deliberately going without a torch. Maybe I shouldn't. Actually, maybe a space like this will be advantageous. I mean, I can hear my footsteps in the mud. Maybe I'll be able to hear something approaching. I'm so on edge I can get jump scared by a chicken. Yeah. The night is almost over, but we still haven't encountered what... Ooh, what is this? Okay, well, we didn't encounter whatever creatures have cursed us, but we did find something else. Huh, is this one of those witches' huts I've been hearing so much about? And no witches to be found, and thank goodness, because we have survived the night, whatever that night is. Ooh, there's some lava here as well, so here's our obsidian. Oh god, <laughs> there's a witch in a tree. Okay, well I found her. Uh, it's really funny when I get jump scared in this game and think, oh thank god, it's just a witch. That was a sound I've never heard before. The sound I'm hearing is the sun sets once more. Okay, I need to get inside. I have the materials now needed to make myself an enchanting table. Alright, grab that. And for now, I think we'll just place it upstairs in the corner. We don't really have the infrastructure to be building books right now. But maybe it's time to start keeping a diary. Since last night, I've been faced with the overwhelming sensation of feeling watched. Though it's at its most intense at night, it seems to stay with me all throughout the day as well. As if something is making its way towards me and I can feel the distance being closed. I found a book inside the witch's hut that, for some reason, I feel can shed some light on what it is I'm feeling. Well, actually, it's not just a feeling. I heard something last night, and something else just a few hours ago. I know there's something out there, and I feel like it'll reveal itself very soon. There it is again. Alright, I might have to undo the drama and get a UI for this. I feel like an old farmer hearing a noise in the cornfield, standing out on his porch with a shotgun just waiting for something to show itself. Whether or not anything will is anyone's guess, but those noises are certainly growing more frequent. Just one yesterday, and now two today. All in very short order, so... <laughs> it's just, I feel that distance being closed, and I don't know what it is or how far it was to begin with. All I know is that I've earned the ire of something. And I'm not really welcome underground anymore, so I can't take shelter in a bunker either. I'm looking out at those trees, those hanging vines. Wondering what might be staring back. No, something definitely, definitely draws near. Perhaps if I head to the top of this hill with clear sight lines in all direction, maybe I'll be able to catch a glimpse of what's coming for me? Now, the usual mobs populate the landscape, but beyond that I can't see a thing. Uh, actually, that is some odd terrain down there. Oh, it's magma blocks shining in the water. Uh, it's moments like this that force you out at night that really do reveal the natural beauty of the landscape. Then again, I'm quite well versed in the things it often hides. As the morning light falls over my home, I'm forced to admit that I've... Wait. There is... There's something there! That was new! Oh, it was like a bloody red skeleton or something! Oh, I was about to give my morning report on how the night was... 
Well, loud, but otherwise uneventful. But I think right in that last moment, something tried to send me a message. Dear Diary, third night of being pursued. Even as I write this, I can hear the sounds drawing closer, growing more violent. I would say I've descended deeper into paranoia, but I know that's not the case. This morning I saw one of them, just barely, but it stood out in its blood-red color, undead on the edge of the swamp. I've begun hastily breeding chickens for arrows. And even the wall of mobs that now surround my house, which would normally be of some concern, are actually of little comfort. Although I have little hope that they would actually do anything to keep the creatures at bay. No. Just as with the creature in the caves, I will face this head on. I have more equipment and more knowledge than ever before. And the only way to stop living in fear is to learn what it is I'm cowering from. If nothing else, so that I can learn to cower more efficiently. I think maybe I try approaching it? Go to the edge of the swamp where I saw that creature. Uh, but so far, no sign of it. Though I now stare back from the view they must have had last night. The longer I fail to see them, and the longer they fail to show themselves, the more taunted I feel. Like these night terrors intend to cause my suffering through the anxiety I feel from knowing they're out there. And maybe that means they won't physically attack me, or maybe it means they will the moment I feel they won't. And I think the time has come to give in to temptation and check that witch's tome. Uh... There's nothing in here. Nothing beyond what I had already scrawled in my own notes. Why, that's odd. I was advised to do this. After seeing the creature on the edge of the swamp, I was sure my experience was reaching a crescendo. But apparently that was not to be the case. And what I thought would be my backup plan, the witch's book, turned out to be curiously empty. Although ever since opening it, I had been having certain thoughts come into my head. Thoughts like, I have to make a big birthday shout-out to Jace Byram. I don't know, it's just kind of coming to me. But in any case, once again I'm heading back out in search of whatever's been stalking me. And I hope something happens soon because, I mean, this roleplay thing is starting to get kind of stale if the same thing happens every night. There's something! Oh my god, it's something! What are you- okay, uh, go off, go off, go off, go off, go off, go off, creeper! What's happening to me? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? I can't do anything about it, I can't do anything about it! Get inside, get inside, get inside! That thing launched me! Oh my god, okay, I need to eat something. I need to- It's coming for me. It's still out there. Whatever that thing is, it's still out there, making noise. It was like some kind of... It, it, it too was blood red, but it's not the same thing I saw the other night. It, it was like some skinny goat creature. Uh, appropriate, I guess that I found it up in the mountains. Perhaps it's undead? Would it still be there, or have I outrun it for the time being? Oh, I couldn't... No, it's there. It's there. And it should be hurt. <sighs> If it didn't propel me away fast enough, no, I don't think that creeper went off. I think that's the same one. Uh, saved its own life in doing so, or... Uh, only for a time. Okay, but we've got one. We've got one, and it left something behind! Oh, it's you guys. Right, I've been forgetting to sleep. Okay, let's grab this stuff. 
Uh, and wait, that's... It looked like regular redstone, but it wasn't. We just got the achievement. Finally, fresh flesh. I mean... Okay, well, you guys are down. And if those noises from the sky are any indication, our ordeal is not over yet. It's just beginning. Okay, we really, really need to stock up. We are in so over our head. That packed such a punch. And oddly enough, in my back pocket, it feels as though something's been written in the witch's book. Bloody hell. And it says we've acquired flesh. That's what this stuff is. Flesh. And it doesn't seem like we can do anything about it, but there's more scrawled in that witch's book, written in by unseen hands. Uh, perhaps if we check it out, we can see. Incomplete meat. Mix flesh and soul together. Eat raw flesh and bathe the bloodless in blood. I don't know what any of that means, but I understand the word eat. Something's happened to us. Okay, I'm gonna put this stuff aside for later, but I, I think the only way we can approach this is as illogical as it sounds, from a scientific perspective, we need to start experimenting on this stuff, trying it with everything, as well as heeding the words of the witch's book to try and figure out what else we can do. I mean, it's the only way to break this curse, right? Almost feels wrong to be applying the word cursed here. Feels like I've been cursed the entire time I've been here. Cursed when my ship went down, cursed when I encountered that creature in the mines below. But this thing... It's something new. I don't think it had anything to do with any of what's happened to me up until this point. I have, honestly have no idea what I did for this to happen to me. But I have to get to the bottom of it, that much is for sure. And even my ample protection may not be enough. Definitely want to keep a distance from these creatures and go ranged, so these chickens couldn't have come soon enough. As the sun rises once more... I can't help but feel like I've broken some kind of sequence. It says in the witch's book that I should have found blood before this, that it comes previously in some kind of chain. I have no idea what it means by mixing flesh and soul together and bathing the bloodless in blood, but... Well, clearly... Clearly this is based around blood, and I'll need more of it in order to progress. This night a storm is arriving, and still these creatures are making their presence known. But last night was certainly encouraging. We've shown that the blood creatures can bleed, and they can be killed, which means I can continue to kill some more. I've upgraded my bow, and we are once again going hunting. Uh, the... <laughs> haze of the sky as the sun sets now reminds me of my pursuers. See, the annoying thing about you guys is that I can't really sleep because the enemies that I'm pursuing are at night. I mean, that are pursuing me. Sorry. Have I let my new confidence take hold too quickly? Point is, I can't sleep and get rid of you guys, which means I'm gonna have to deal with you guys every single night, probably. Teleporting pigs? Okay, I mean, you can be part of it too, I guess. It's just... Surprising. They're out here somewhere. These noises are constant now. They're nearby. I know they're near. But I just can't see them. Oh, 
Okay, that sounded... That was weird timing, because that sounded a lot like the chickens. Oh, like some kind of demonic, like, pitch change of the chickens, but chickens nonetheless, only... And with a little bit of whispering in there. Yes, thank you for replaying that so everyone could hear. Why am I hearing that during the day now? I I've noticed it's every time I'm over here by the swamp. That's where you watch me from, isn't it? This is what you've chosen as your outpost. Or maybe, well, since that's where the witch's hut is, maybe that's where you've always resided. Maybe it was coming in here that got you angry. Oh, this is a cursed land indeed that I found myself washed ashore in. <laughs> Can't go two feet without running into some kind of cave monster or blood demon. Or witch, apparently. Tell you what. Tonight I'm curious just how far from my home will these things actually follow me? Maybe if we get a little bit of distance, they'll be more likely to show themselves. Of course, we'll want to stick still in the vicinity of the swamp. Maybe using these rivers to circle around it. Seems the moonlight won't be doing much for us tonight. Well, I suppose that's fine. My eyes always have had a hard time adjusting to the light, and maybe this will give me some kind of advantage. Though I get the feeling these things don't see with conventional eyes. What was that about? There's something. There's something, there's something, there's something. And I don't know how much longer I have left in the night, so I'm just going to pursue and hope it doesn't escape. Where did it go? Where did it go? Down there, another one of those rams. Oh, cursed things. And let's see if we can get a closer look before we engage. Yeah, look. We can see its ribs, its long snout, and its glowing white eye. Well, from there, it shouldn't be able to do anything to us. Hit, and hit, and although it packs quite a punch, it can't seem to take quite as much punishment, which is very good. You guys are so annoying when I have stuff to do at night. Uh, perhaps with more flesh, I can make something happen. I can only hope. Only a little while left in the night. We've got a prize. Tell you what, I'm going to sleep the night away just to get rid of you. Just to get rid of you, and because we know that we can kill them. Well, at least we know that we can kill their pets. I have yet to see another one of those skeletal creatures. I'll be honest, I'm still unnerved by the presence of more humanoid ones. While I'm certainly no less horrified by these creatures and their apparent interest in me personally, I have to say I'm fascinated with these samples I've gotten. And they can't be properly studied, it's clear, without a proper laboratory to examine them in. So I'm going to begin this extension on my home, and hopefully we can begin looking at these things in relative peace and safety. It's just a coincidence, totally, that I'm building this under my house in an ultra-secure bunker. It may seem rudimentary, and in truth it is, but this is the best I could manage on such short notice. And I think it'll suit our purposes just fine. These are all the samples we have of the flesh from those ram creatures. And tonight we'll try to get some more to work with, but for now... Let's see what happens if we just try to combine a bunch. Oh, and we are able to make a flesh block. But nothing happens if we add even more. Okay, so if we create one of these... Uh, well, we've got it, but it doesn't seem like it actually does anything more. Uh, well, except for some truly gruesome home decor. Can we turn it back into the flesh? Yes, we can. Hmm, and it says we can check our recipe book as well. Bloodless flesh soul. Okay, well, I guess that's a thing we... Skulk. 
Skulk. We need Skulk for that, of course. Why wouldn't we need Skulk for that? Uh, that's gonna be... that's gonna be a bit of a tall order. It, it seems like maybe there's some kind of, like, alchemical properties to this. Like, it wants me to combine and mix and match different tissues in order to achieve new goals. Oh, you guys... Uh, you guys can't be turned into arrows soon enough because I imagine we can also skip some of these steps by eliminating some of those other creatures that we've seen. Nevertheless, a uh, goal has been set. In the morning, we'll have to start searching for some new caves and, well, tonight, we'll continue our hunt. There's one. I see one down there. Oh, look at it all hunched over. Okay, we'll definitely, we'll definitely want to get the drop on it. Hopefully it doesn't disappear when it's out of my sight. Yes, ranged is the way to go. They've actually been fairly unaware of me. You're fast, you're fast, you're fast. And your destruction echoes throughout the night. Okay, I've got to get down there and collect samples as soon as possible. But it seems it's just more flesh. We really do need that skulk. But as I expected, you are not the root of this. It seemed at first... I could... Underneath that gooey mass, I could just see the humanoid skeleton beneath. But somewhat unintuitively, for its slouched posture, it moved very quickly across even terrain, but seemed to struggle with the hills. And those long, long arms. Still, neither creature really seemed to be on the hunt for me in particular. I've actually been haunted more by the sounds than the creatures themselves, so... That further fuels my theory that they're just one small part of a, a larger campaign. Maybe not even to kill me, but just to terrorize me. Uh, something they did very effectively for the first few days, but... Well, I suppose a curious mind has a sort of natural immunity, or at least resistance to such things. At least that's what I'd like to tell myself. Truth be told, the child part of my brain that appreciates hidden passages and secret forts really likes this panic room. The idea being that if something pursues me to the house and the wooden door isn't enough to stop them, I can run upstairs and just slide down the ladder. But day is broken, and we are going to have to find ourselves a cave. Just a... About, oh my god, that actually scared the crap out of me. And any day will do, uh, any cave will do, sorry. Um, but not the one, not the one where we encountered that creature. It's got to be something else, because we know that there's no deep dark in any of those. Well, if I'm to expand my search, maybe I could dabble in some other aspect of the occult. I still have some obsidian, and there is an unused nether portal over that way. Sometimes they come to me. Hello! Not very attentive, are they? I'm starting to think that these skeletal creatures aren't actually active participants in my torment. Well, they are, but perhaps inadvertently so. I definitely think they're being controlled by something more, and actually may even be past victims given their human appearance. The bad news is that this thing has to be pretty much completely built from scratch. And the good news is that's actually not as hard as you think when the entire floor is basically made of obsidian. But remember, whatever we have, we need to double it so that we can build another one in the nether itself. I have no idea what's going on with this block right here. But we are ready to ignite. And in the course of trying to correct one issue, step right into another nightmare. Whoa. 
I've never seen the nether like this before. Oh, all this lava is going to be kind of difficult to navigate. Maybe I can take some samples. I had actually brought an iron pickaxe in the hope of saving some of my silk touch condition. It seems like those noises haven't ceased even here. In fact, they seem almost agitated by my presence here. Look at this ash constantly raining down. It's almost like it's a part of the nether which has somehow cooled. The only thing I can really see is over there. That's the only thing that strikes my interest. Uh, but maneuvering here is actually exceptionally difficult. Well, this has been quite a rare moment where the nether was actually more work for fast travel than just traveling by boat. But I suppose, if nothing else, it's an interesting sight. Are you gonna attack? Uh, sort of? It's just I couldn't really tell because you're sucking at it, but... Oh, I see. You're like slimes. But, you know, in the nether. Now that certainly looks promising. And thank you, Pursuers, for the haunting music to go along with it. Uh, as well as what appears to be a structure over here. Oh, look at that. It almost appears to be a gaping mouth open in a scream with two glowing eyes near the bottom of its head. Uh, but I'm going to check out over here and see if we can't get inside there. Huh. That's not a buried shipwreck. No, I think what we found... Well, first and foremost, more samples. This wooden symbol in these candles suggests it's part of some kind of ritualistic formation. Notably, the stone that the basin is made of is all different materials. Or at least all different configurations of the same material, possibly. Let's have a look. And we found some blood. The witch's book said to bathe the bloodless in blood. I was thinking that when I got my hands on some of this stuff, I would try it on the chickens, but after seeing this altar, I'm wondering if I'm not maybe supposed to baptize myself. Well, nothing seems to have happened, but maybe it's worth taking some notes here and maybe trying to bring this back in some way. Or perhaps recreate it back home. And that's not all. I'm seeing another one over there. Tell you what, I'm not satisfied with bringing back just one sample. I'm thinking we'll head into the mountain, try and see if there's a cave entrance going further down, and in the process get some more iron so we can make some more buckets. Uh, we're on these things trail. Or... Maybe they're just native to these lands. These fields are full of these things. Which leads me to wonder where they're getting the blood from. Does it materialize from some other plane? Or do these things require sacrifices from our world to keep themselves sustained? Tell you what, this second one will be deconstructed so that it can be rebuilt in a lab setting. I think that's our best course for this. After, of course, we've extracted what's in this pool. I found a little bit of iron. Unfortunately, I don't yet have any shelter, and the sun is going down. But, but as is usual for me, maybe my timing is perfect. That is a village, and while I can't see any villagers just yet, well, I think I may have to pay them a visit. Maybe they know something about this. I mean, they'd have to, right? Okay, good. Although it seems they've turned in for the night, this place does have some inhabitants. 
You know what? Perhaps... Perhaps it'll be a good idea to just stick close to the village guardian for a little while. Oh. After all this time, I thought I'd never see people again. You hearing this? Because the more you don't react to it, the more I think it's something that's being beamed directly into my head. This whole time I felt that this was something being done specifically to torment me, and somehow it's managing to make me feel all alone, even while surrounded by people. My isolation and curiosity may have made me just the slightest bit deranged, but... Well, what better test subjects to bathe the bloodless, huh? It doesn't seem to have done much. But my god, what a horrifying image. Well, let's just hope that they don't remember this when they wake up. Uh, although I can only imagine the dreams I've just imparted on them. Well, since nothing came of that, that'll go down as just a thing I did and no one else was around to see, so we'll just never speak of it again. I've also discovered some new information in the witch's book. Apparently those things are referred to as blood lambs and blood husks. Which seems pretty appropriate given what we've seen. Alright, now what happens if we let the blood run into the water? Oh, it'll actually... It'll actually continue to go down! And there's another image entirely for allowing ourselves to become submerged in it. Perhaps that's something we'll have to look into. And we can't breathe in it either, which makes sense, I suppose. It seems to be made of some kind of deep slate. Suggesting that they brought this material up from deep underground, which makes sense uh, considering it apparently has some kind of interaction with uh, Skulk. Alright, I may not have found what I was looking for, but I found something even better. I've got my samples, and I'm heading back. Some quick new construction should be able to fairly easily accommodate my new theory. So let's remove that. Alright, so that is done. And if we just place a door right there... The immersion chamber should be complete. Well, let's see what happens. I literally can't see a thing. Okay, okay, I was really nervous for a second because I was drowning, but couldn't find the door, even though I knew it had to be right next to me. Well, this is an experience, a horrifying little thing I've created in my own home. Uh, but bathe the bloodless, we still don't know what that means, the bloodless. Chickens have blood, right? Yeah, chickens have blood. Tell you what maybe doesn't have blood, skeletons? And I can hear them moving around nearby. Are you bloodless? I guess you don't count as bloodless. I guess this one will just have to go into the sample container. At least until we can reconstruct one of those effigies. Perhaps we can try encasing it in flesh? No, nothing. Hmm, I, I really don't know what more there is to be done. Let's try engaging this one in melee combat. Die. And die! Oh, that sound you make is horrifying, but more samples, never a bad thing. I definitely don't think I've done this exactly correctly, but maybe it'll get some kind of response. I have to say, it's more than a little nerve-wracking seeing that thing out there while I'm lying in bed.
But I suppose the pursuit of science is never easy. I turned around and I got jump scared by that door thinking it was a skeleton. That thing's pretty nerve-wracking too, knowing what's down there. Let you in on a little secret, there's a button only on one side. Only works going down. See, I don't want something following me down this way, something that doesn't know how to work a button, but I also don't want something that's not me coming up. Alright, I had completely forgotten about the candles. But there we are. And uh, once we light these things, that should be more or less right, if not for the unevenness of the blood. We definitely are going to need more samples of this. Huh. But oddly enough, it seems like these blood pools are actually infinite. No matter how many I take, it just never runs out. Oh, that is quite strange indeed. Well, uh, the infinite blood wells are certainly useful in terms of aiding my research at the very least, even if their very existence does raise even further questions. I'll be honest, it's been pretty frustrating having this whole thing be held back by a single block, which on my other save I literally built a new sky out of. Oh, but this is interesting. This is the most intact wreck I've yet seen. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, that was hilarious. I mean, probably not so much for the crew. And I do have a great deal of empathy for the crew of these vessels. Ooh, maybe this cave could be the start of something. I would certainly hope so. It seemed in my other save that, like, every two feet I was finding fissures to the center of the earth. Here, yeah, it's been so much more difficult now that I really need them. It seems like quite a long way down. And I don't know what that is down there. Uh, just more, just more textures glitching out. I say we utilize what we currently have with us. Eh. This is actually quite a bit dangerous to use as an elevator because when we're inside, we can't see anything at all. Okay, we made it to the bottom. And as usual for such places, ooh, diamonds. As usual for such places, it's totally infested. We'll definitely want to clear this landing area so that we can start delving even deeper. Oh, look, here I am organically wandering this cave, and whoa! I, I haven't found any deep dark, but look. An artifact from the deep dark. Something which can be used to create Skulk on the surface. That I found totally organically. Yeah, so in case you don't buy that, this is because... Oh, no, am I even going to be able to break this with a pick? All right, there we go. I had silk touch on my pick, so no hose for this. This is not worth spending hours when I'm trying to showcase this mod, waiting for RNG to bless me with this. And I thought it would be a lot easier because I was tripping over them every two feet on the other world, but honestly, like, I got stuff to do. Come on, last chance to be baptized. <sighs> That's really not how it works. Okay. I have to say, I have no idea what I was expecting from this. But the creator of this mod did an incredible job. It is so much more involved than I thought it could be. Especially when you realize how quickly this thing was actually made. I mean, it was only made over the course of like a couple of weeks. But we have our treasure that we found legitimately. And we've got a whole bunch of samples to bank. Now all we have to do is find a good spot to wait, place it down, and see who comes to dinner. Right here should do just fine, and you guys should do just fine. Come on over. You can come on over a little faster than that. Boop, and yep, boop, boop. And there we have our first skulk. 
There we go. Right now, we only need one, although we'll take more for the lab. Who knows if we might have to farm this stuff. Maybe just one piece isn't enough. I know they're just loud little guys, but I sort of like to think that the chickens are freaking out. Almost like the dogs barking outside at night in signs. They know something's up. But now, what did it say? Uh, let's consult the witch's book once more. It says, mix flesh and soul together. Now, what did the recipe say? There we go. All right, so we're going to need a little bit more from the coffer, so we'll break down one of these blocks. Here I am on yet another obsessed and sleepless night, desperately trying to put things together and figure out the origin of this horror. Bloodless flesh soul. And we get the advancement, incomplete meat. Incomplete. So is that what we're doing? We're trying to complete it? Tell me more, witch's book. Craft the blood sword and the blood amulet. Well, we still have no idea how to bathe the bloodless, but what about this? Uh, let's have another glance through our through our crafting table. Oh, according to this, we could also have done this with soul soil. Huh. I didn't even realize that. Well, that would have been a much easier find. Uh, but still not one that would have been very convenient from our perspective. Hmm, I'm seeing two of them over there. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to take them. I could definitely use the flesh. Uh, and you guys aren't really made of strong stuff either. Uh, you will attack on sight, it's just I have to get pretty... That was unnerving! Oh, that might make its way into the thumbnail, the way it kind of stopped there when I had it dead to rights. And just sort of stared at me, and from that angle, I was able to see it's not just a skeleton. It's almost, when you're looking into its eyes, it's almost like its whole front body is just like a black pit. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but in that moment I was staring at it, I just kind of froze, and that's what it looked like. All right, but it didn't really tell me how to do this. Well, the bloodbath achievement does have a picture of these like soul somethings. I, I guess maybe it has something to do with those. I still don't know what I'm actually meant to apply that to. I mean, this whole thing is so cryptic and vague. Okay, so this item cannot be used on chickens. Noted. Cannot be eaten as far as I can tell. Can it be used with blood? Hmm. It can actually be used with the poured out blood. And from there, oh! Oh, okay, well that makes sense. It's called bloodless. So from there, we get flesh souls. Okay, so let's make two more of these, I guess. Definitely a back to the lab moment. Now let's have a look at this tome to see what that actually does. I'm the intruder now. Stab flesh. Okay, well, let's see if we have enough from our existing samples to create another block. And we do. So let's... Place that down, and use our sword. I guess that's not what I was meant to do. Ah, it does now tell us how to make a blood sword, and it does quite a bit of damage. Oh, I probably have to... Okay, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I know what to do. I just need to go upstairs and get some more bones. I'll be honest, it does sort of feel like we're making something whole again, combining blood with flesh and bones. Did you know that the bones are actually the skeleton's money? And we've got one. And we earn the advancement, stab, stabby, bleed out. Now this mod's got a style, I'll give it that. Now, what happens if we use it to stab flesh? That! Exactly that! 
Okay, we have a... What, what? What's happening? I can't see. I can't see! That's not good. That's not good. Do we have any way of getting back? Oh, I don't have too many arrows. Only 23. That's a health bar on top. Oh my, we've stumbled into a boss fight. A boss fight full of enemies. Oh my god, I am not at all prepared for this. What happens if I die here? Am I going to lose all this? Okay, maybe the Blood Queen is that thing in the center. Uh, and you, you will... We will get your attention. Oh, but you can't move in the blood. It actually stops you. Okay, we're dropping some sick beats here. Okay. Yeah, we're actually immune to you here, but maybe you'll still spawn in. All of you, yes, get in. Get in. All of you. Yep. You can still kind of move, but only barely. Alright, well, let's see if we can't get some shots in from here. Yes, that does damage it. I don't know if we'll have enough arrows, though. That's the thing. Actually, due to that continuous damage effect that we get from the Blood Rams, I'm starting to think that maybe... Maybe the damage they're taking is just a, an effect of the blood sword. Eh, certainly a powerful attack, but not one that serves me very much if I can't get in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna head and spawn myself in some more arrows because honestly, I don't see how this is doable without preparing. If I had known, I could have brought more arrows and been ready for this. Uh, but I think I advanced too quickly. I don't even figure out what that blood amulet is, but I'm sure it was vital to this. Uh, but in the end, that's what we had to do. We had to... We had to bring flesh to flesh in order to find the lair of whatever this is. One more should do it. And there it goes. But you're not going anywhere. How do I... How does one get out of here, then? Okay, it does seem like... Maybe you could start thinning out. Like, maybe you won't respawn now that she's gone. Alright, hopping out for the first time, and hopping back in. Everybody in the pool. Uh, we're just gonna do this... We're just gotta farm this, really. And maybe afterwards I can just try and run. Oh, wait, there's some kind of drop on the ground. Wait, I feel like I have to run and go try and get that. I feel like I have to run and go try and get that. Hang on. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, keep it, keep the thing open. Keep it, keep the thing open. Run, 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 and get it. Yes, 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 yes. Run, 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 run. And I'm dead. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Okay. Oh, that portal... That portal remains, I guess, and here's a bunch of stuff. Here's a bunch of stuff and stuff and stuff. Okay. I'm questioning the balance. Really questioning the balance. Oh, maybe now that you're all in here, uh, maybe you can just be trapped in that pool party? Is there a way out? Is there any way out? What am I... All right, I made the blood amulet from some of the remaining samples. Basically, all the remaining samples, actually. And I have to assume that this helps us in some way. I mean, maybe I have to offhand it. I don't know, maybe just having it works. I can't actually seem to put it... I can't seem to equip it in any way. Let's go. Oh, you're all still gonna be here! And you all still pack up punch, but you're not pursuing quite as aggressively, I think? Nope, you're still pursuing exactly as aggressively. What What am I supposed to do? A according to this, I have all the advancements, but I don't have that disc. How was I actually meant to get back? I mean, I killed the queen. I... 
I I'm completely confused. And now I have this permanent fixture in my basement. The only thing I can think to do is just keep going back, keep running around, and try to lure everything into the blood. There's no other... I... Okay, I have the amulet and the sword now. Does that do anything for me? Let's try and thin your numbers a little bit. It's just that we are racing against the clock here. All right, there's the disc. They don't seem quite as attentive as they once were. Yep. Still gotta be fast on them, though. And let's pick all this stuff up piece by piece. And we should be able to handle the rest of what's here. Pick everything up in case eliminating them all causes some kind of way back. We don't want to leave all this stuff behind. Uh, we basically have to. And you're dead. And can we please not be sent back before picking up uh, the diamond stuff? Okay, that's everything. But now what? Oh, maybe we have to... Maybe we have to destroy that. Maybe what's left behind... No, it actually appears indestructible. So then how... how does one leave? Oh. And now that you've all been destroyed, we can see... <laughs> well, I mean, I already knew, I suppose, but now that I actually have a chance to think about it, this whole place is made of blood and flesh and bone. Almost like this whole world is some kind of organism, and all these things are just the little microbes and cells living within it. Which really leads me to wonder who screwed up that led all of them to be brought to our world. I mean, they were terrorizing me specifically, but maybe something to do with that village. Or maybe they just go anywhere where flesh can be found. In any case, how do I get out of here besides, you know, death? I want to play this disc badly. Well, we can give our new room a view, but unfortunately it's not really a good one. So that was Hersicle's Deep Blood mod, and I love it a lot. They actually said that they consider this to be pretty small. I mean, to me, this has been quite a side quest. And, well, I think it could use some, like, development and some balancing, especially in this end part here. I think this is amazing, and I would love to see this be developed further. What I love about it the most is that it is truly scary. I mean, it felt so appropriate doing that RP thing of building a lab, trying to just mix and match things and figure out what goes where. Those first few nights where I would hear these terrifying wails off in the distance, catching only brief glimpses of these horrifying monstrosities... Finding those baptismal pools of blood just off in the landscape, dotting it almost like grain silos dot the Midwest. It was so... it, it was like creepy and sort of cool looking in a way. And then once we actually fought those creatures, realizing that there were all kinds of ways we could like mix and match their flesh. I mean, honestly, I know it was just an RP thing, but I would love to see like the crafting aspect of these new items expanded. Because that was a lot of fun, just being thrust into this horrifying scenario out of nowhere and then having to learn what it's all about through trial and error. And being guided along by the advancements, which was also a big help. It was cryptic, not directly telling me what to do, but also not so obtuse that I was always at a loss, you know? Maybe if we try, like, climbing on top of it? Like, something we wouldn't be able to do during regular gameplay? And that was it. Okay, thank you. Ugh. Ugh! Okay, uh, this- this was bad, this was bad. Um, I came back wrong. Uh, okay, mine ourselves out, mine ourselves out, mine ourselves out. Uh, I do wonder if those creatures will still be spawning out there. We may have killed the queen and got her sick gear. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the remnants aren't still around. Not to mention, there's a portal here that I can't even see. It actually blew a hole straight into the wall, which, honestly, I don't know how much of this is intentional and how much isn't, but you know, from an RP perspective, this certainly has told a story. 
And that's the cool thing, is that what I've realized is that this is a story that can tell itself differently depending on how the player views it. They may never decide to pursue this. They may begin their journey by discovering one of these things and then encountering monsters. While I am going to criticize that final boss fight, I actually don't think it's in need of as much adjustment as you might think from how much difficulty it gave me. Because really, I don't even think you need to adjust the ridiculous spawns. I don't think you need to change anything, except perhaps make it a little bit clearer how you actually leave once it's done. And maybe give like some kind of warning so that you know to go get more arrows and such. But then again, maybe it's actually meant to kill you the first time. Maybe you're meant to inadvertently fall into it and then come back better geared later. I'm not sure. And with the way despawning works in Minecraft, I think if you're not back there for a total of five minutes, it won't despawn, right? So you're not even really losing your stuff. Okay, never mind, I went to criticize that and I'm actually realizing it's more brilliant than I thought. Because to be honest, I actually really liked being thrust in there and being totally unprepared. So the fact that it's a different dimension, well, I guess you can go back for round two. Now, you might think the same thing I thought at first, which is, look at all those enemies, how am I possibly supposed to do this? But look, it's sort of like the ending of MyHouse.Wad, and I don't want to spoil it directly by talking too much about it, but basically, it, it gives you a seemingly overwhelming task, something where it looks like you're going to be dead in seconds, but then you don't die, and you realize, I actually do have the tools to handle this. They're burdened by blood. For the fact that they come from a blood dimension, they can't actually walk in it. They're weakened by it. Where did you actually come from? And so that's actually a really interesting thing, narrative-wise, where the first time you see this is probably going to be in that final segment where you think you're about to get annihilated. Actually makes you wonder if the purpose of these things isn't maybe, like, an offering of blood from the villagers to keep them away. Oh, now there's an interesting thought. So much left up to speculation. And so much that you have to find out for yourself through only the vaguest of guides. Uh, it's a really cool and creepy mod that actually manages to do a really good job of balancing the creepness and the terror. And now I guess the only thing left to do is build ourselves a jukebox and play that disc. We have got so many samples, pocketfuls, to put away. And for now, I think even these artifacts are too dangerous to be kept on my person, but I will certainly save them for a rainy day. And just in case it summons something horrible to our world, well, I think the least we can do for everyone up there is keep it to our dimension. Or at least try to.
Hmm. Now that is quite an awesome and frankly appropriate reward. I mean, it's kind of like the presence of this mod in Minecraft itself, isn't it? Starts off beautiful and somewhat nostalgic, but there's a little creeping something in the background. And then as you play, especially within this mod, it eventually rises to the level of a scream, an agonized scream that overpowers everything beneath it. But then they sort of come to a balance and they work together in harmony. And then, well, then it just becomes a song of triumph of all the cool things you're doing along the way. And finally, victory with a little hint of adventure still to come at the end. And it definitely sounds like there's more to be found out there. Perhaps I can sleep with a couple of trinkets by my side. Oh wait, I had almost forgotten uh, before I end this video. Actually, uh, I'm coming back and recording this, which is why my keyboard is a little bit more clickety-clack than usual. I was issued a dire warning by the creator against doing what I'm about to do. So let's try it. Kiss a boy? I would never do that. Uh -huh. Oh, you like kissing boys, don't you? You like kissing girls, don't you? Ooh, you will wear thigh highs and cuddle men. Where are all the men? I need men. Boy kisser certified. Yeah, this mod was made Ooh, for the channel. You like boys. You're a boy kisser. You dislike kissing, don't you? I'm such a silly boy kisser. I know what you are. Ooh, you all now like kissing boys. Y'all are boy kissers. I am using hypnotic powers to make you suddenly like men! What happens this if we... This is look saying this shit. You don't like kissing? That's cool too! It... Okay. I've had another conversation with the creator. I mean, some more ghostly scribblings have been scrawled in my witch's book. And there are actually a couple more things that I might want to try. First of all, we have this here flesh. What happens if we try cooking it? I mean, we did have absolute boatloads of it after that run into the other world. Uh, but we can't actually cook it on, on a smoker. What about here? Uh, we can cook it in a regular furnace, though. Uh, if anything, that just indicates to me that it's not to be considered food, but... Well, this... Could be a decent source, perhaps? Oh, we've got new recipes as well. Uh, maybe we'll check those recipes before we try eating this. I don't know what this is going to do to me, and the villagers are too far away for me to have some unwitting participants. I don't see anything new. Well, I suppose we'll try eating it. When we did it before, it didn't restore that much hunger. But this actually restores quite a lot. Oh, that's actually satiating on a level I don't know if I've experienced before. And a level I'm not sure I want to experience. Is this really a road I want to go down? Oh, but there is more. What happens if we do actually try to descend into that void? Alright, let's uh, get rid of our torches. We're not going to need them here just to have a space open and start carving through this flesh. It, it just seems like a void, and if it hadn't been for the urgings of the creator, I mean the witch's book, I wouldn't be trying this, but... Maybe if we try riding a column of water down, we can discover something? Oh, it still appears to be going. Let's do it. Oh, uh, this is... this is truly horrifying. There's the arena receding behind us. 
But just how far down will this go? Actually, if we press F3, how deep are we? Uh, we're 160 blocks above ground. Maybe if we keep lowering, I mean, what happens when we hit zero? What happens when we hit negative zero? Or rather, negative numbers. Negative zero is... Oh, there is actually stuff down here! I never would have thought of this! Okay, uh, we don't need you anymore. Oh, it's an ocean of blood! Uh, uh, get out, get out, get out! Oh, it's deep, it's deep! Oh, and there's mounds of flesh all about, but... That's not all. I'm actually seeing something in the distance. Uh, we're gonna have to be very careful and make sure we don't lose sight of this column of water, because if we do, there's not gonna be any leaving here. Oh, li look at us wading through an ocean of blood, <laughs> only coming to the surface to gasp for air amid drops of blood falling from the sky. Uh, but look, we can always break up our monotonous existence with towers of flesh cubes. Well, at least we can use the flesh to take shelter from the blood. Aw oh, man, my character in From the Fog would absolutely love to have these resources. That looks like land. Is it land? Do I have wood on me? I do. I'm building a boat. I'm totally building a blood boat. Okay, uh, we just gotta get over there first so we can place down a crafting table. Or wait, can we swim? Can we swim in the blood? Uh, we actually can. Uh, it's just not worth it because we can't see anything. And more importantly, I don't know how deep I'm getting. But there are flesh islands amid this ocean of blood. So, that's good, right? Also notable that I'm not seeing any blood beings. But I guess we can just set up camp right here. Why not? There we go. <laughs> oh, now all I need is an adorable little sailor's hat. Alright, uh, let's get some torches and place this right here, basically to indicate, like, which side we need to travel from. Indicating pretty much that, like, this corner, between this torch and this torch, that's the direction we need to go to see the, the waterfall. And I guess we start exploring from here? Oh my, it, somehow the emptiness is the most unnerving part of it. I wonder if there is anything else to be found out here. All I know is that it really feels like this is probably what you see when you die. I mean, honestly, how can you be in this situation and not feel like it's some kind of punishment for your hubris, for your curiosity? I really hope there's no such thing as blood sharks. Funnily enough, the surface of the blood is so still and so calm that when you see all these, well, I guess, flesh peaks appearing on the horizon, it almost creates the illusion that there's some kind of curvature here. Like, at some point, you'll end up falling off the edge of the world. But I don't think there's anything more to see here. All I know is that if each of these flesh blocks is worth, well, four flesh... Well, that's essentially an infinite source of high protein. Not how I would want to break the silence. But I must say, I never would have thought when I was running around outside my house investigating those horrifying noises that this is where it would end up in a few days' time. There we go. That's how we find it. We have to find the one column that stretches off even farther than you'd expect. Looking up, we can't even see the arena. Oh, I've just realized. If I had actually jumped and landed down here, I would have survived. I would have landed in the blood and survived, but been trapped here. If I had given in to my curiosity, assuming that there was no way back... <laughs> This would have been my fate. There would have been no way out for this character. Well, I would have been doomed to constantly collect this flesh and try and stack it, hoping I can build it in the right place. Well, as I rise out of this nightmare, as the wind picks up outside my window, 
I think this would be a good place to end it. You know, I knew that my lab would be a lab of horrors, but uh, I never knew it would contain this within it. But I suppose I could list this as square footage if I decide to sell it. Anyway, I've already sung my praises, but this was a really cool mod, and... Well, if you want this, even if it's just for home decor, you can check it out at the link in the description. But, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this mod out for yourself, that link will also be in the description, like I just said. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.